Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. I've not come into your homes for some time because I had hoped that the next time I did so, I would come to announce that we were ready to lift the restrictions and protocols and put our lives and economy back to normal. Alas, that is not the case. So it has become necessary for me to come to your homes this evening after a 10-week absence to provide you with an update on our nation's COVID-19 situation. As per data available from the Ghana Health Service, it appears that unfortunately, our nation, like many others, is experiencing a third wave of COVID-19 infections. These increased infections have largely been driven by the Delta variant of the virus, which according to the World Health Organization has increased transmissibility rates and in our case in Ghana has led in recent weeks to a rise in hospitalization and ICU bed uptakes and tragically deaths. Indeed, in update number 25, the last date I rendered on 16th May, our total active case count stood at 1,314, with our daily infection rate standing at 100. 1,121,168 tests had been conducted, of which 92,460 persons had been infected. 91,146 persons had recovered with a total of 783 deaths. Since that update, the situation improved significantly, whereby in June, our active cases stood at some 1,200. Our daily infection rate fell to 50 cases and recorded 10 deaths in the whole of the month. However, in recent weeks, we've seen a marked increase in the number of cases. As of Friday, 23rd July 2021, three weeks later, the Ghana Health Service is now reporting that our total number of active cases stands at 4,521. A total of 1,406,011 tests have been conducted out of which 102,103 persons have been infected with the virus and 96,759 persons have recovered. Our daily infection rate for the past week is 350 cases and sadly 40 more people have died from COVID-19 over the last 10 weeks, bringing the cumulative number of deaths to 823 deaths since the onset of the pandemic. Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi metropolitan areas remain the hotspots of infections. This entire development is very alarming. Fellow Ghanaians, it is obvious from the data that we've let our guard down, with many going about their daily duties in clear breach of and disregard for the protocols. At a time when the economy is on the rebound and businesses activities picking up, we must do everything possible to contain this outbreak. We cannot afford to return to the days of partial lockdowns, which brought considerable hardships and difficulties for all of us. You returned me to office in the elections of 7th December with a clear and decisive mandate to protect lives and livelihoods and steer our nation out of the grips of the pandemic and onto a path of sustained economic growth and progress. Fortunately for us, we have tried and tested response protocols which we have implemented since March of 2020. They've stood us in good stead, and we have no choice but to return to the strict implementation 
or some of them. It is extremely troubling to note that the high compliance rate with mask wearing has fallen alarmingly. The wearing of masks in public places, fellow Ghanaians, continues to be mandatory. There are no exceptions to this rule and strict conformity with this protocol will be enforced. Anyone found to be flouting this directive will have him or herself to blame. We cannot afford anyone's recklessness to endanger the lives of the majority of persons in the country. The COVID-19 task force, which I chair, has recommended that a second look be taken of the protocols that have been put in place for social and public gatherings, in particular weddings and funerals across the country. I have in previous updates emphasized the need for the strict observance of safety protocols at all such gatherings. To ensure that such gatherings do not become the sources of infections, the following must be adhered to by all at these gatherings. Firstly, the wearing of masks continues to be mandatory and persons must respect the enhanced hygiene protocols. Secondly, all such events must be held in open air spaces. Thirdly, the duration of such events is limited to two hours. Fourthly, there must be observance of the one meter social distancing rule. And fifthly, handshakes must be avoided. Furthermore, given that people sitting together to eat, drink, laugh, dance, and talk in large gatherings without masks are the riskiest activities for spreading the virus, all post-event receptions particularly related to weddings and funerals, are banned. I want to reiterate, the protocols surrounding activities in churches and mosques remain the same as our protocols in schools. With workplaces currently witnessing a resurgence in COVID-19 infections, it is important that owners and management of businesses and workplaces implement strictly the guidelines on staff management and workplace protocols, such as the use of a shift system and technology, mask wearing, social distancing and hygiene protocols, as was required in the earlier days of the pandemic. Mask wearing in commercial vehicles and in marketplaces continue to be mandatory. The Ghana Health Service has moved to fortify its contact tracing, testing, and treating campaigns, especially across the hotspots of Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi metropolitan areas. COVID-19 treatment centers continue to be resourced with medical supplies, personal protection equipment, and health workers. We will continue to ensure that all arriving passengers at the Kutuka International Airport are in possession of a negative PCR test result upon their arrival in Ghana, a test which should have been conducted not more than 72 hours before the scheduled departure from the country of origin. In addition, all passengers will continue to be subjected to a mandatory COVID test on arrival. Fellow Ghanaians, indications are that in the course of this quarter of the year, the availability of vaccines for our country will ramp up. Government is therefore standing by its commitment to vaccinate 20 million Ghanaians, i.e. the adult, entire adult population, by the end of this year in spite of the huge global demand for vaccines by countries and the surge in infections the world over. So far, 
1,393 vaccine doses have been administered, with 865,422 persons having received a single jab, and 405,971 persons have received their full dose of two jabs. We are expecting through the COVAX facility and the African Union 1,229,670 doses of the Pfizer vaccines from the government of the United States of America and 249,000 AstraZeneca vaccines from the government of the United Kingdom. Government is also in the process of procuring 17 million Johnson and Johnson single doses per person vaccines through the African medium supply platform in this quarter. We have as such upgraded our national, regional and district cold chain facilities in order to widen our access to vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna that require minus 70 degrees Celsius cold chain. These include 16 ultra-low cold freezers, 58 units of ultra-low freezers, 50 normal vaccine refrigerators, 300 boxes to be filled with ice packs, 300 ice-packed freezers, 10 cold chain vans, and 120 temperature monitoring devices. These are in addition to the existing zipline cold chain distribution service, for which we are grateful. I thank as well UPS, the American Multinational Shipping, Receiving and Supply Chain Management Company, and Cosmos Energy, the American Oil and Gas Company, for their generous donations towards this development. Fellow Ghanaians, it is important to stress once again, that all the vaccines to be used in the country have been certified as safe for use by our national regulatory agency, the Food and Drugs Authority. There should therefore be no hesitancy amongst the population who are yet to be vaccinated. As the off saying goes, it is better to be safe than sorry. The global shortage of vaccines means that we must develop our capacity to produce our own vaccines domestically and reduce our dependence on foreign supplies. We must be self-sufficient in this regard in the future and prepare ourselves better to deal with any such occurrences in the future. To this end, the committee I established under the leadership of the world-renowned Ghanaian scientist, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boateng, to investigate Ghana's potential as a vaccine manufacturing hub to meet national and regional needs, has presented its preliminary report, which, amongst others, recommends the establishment of a national vaccine institute to spearhead this development. Government has committed to inject seed funding of some 25 million United States dollars this year into this whole enterprise. The Institute will be charged with delivering six clear mandates. One, establishing local vaccine manufacturing plants. Two, deepening research and development for vaccines in Ghana. Three, upgrading and strengthening the FDA. Four, forging bilateral and multilateral partnerships for vaccine manufacturing in various areas, such as funding, clinical trials, technology transfer, licensing, and assignment of intellectual property rights. Five, building the human resource base for vaccine discovery, development and manufacture, and six, establishing a permanent national secretariat
to coordinate vaccine development and manufacture. In the short term, the Frimpong Boating Committee is facilitating the capacity of domestic pharmaceutical companies to fill and finish COVID-19 vaccines. And we are now to me and in term near, we are here now as sunny amman who subium. And I'm saying, indeed, she shall have so. Titru, ye jai mask no she. Miss Ramo, is she say I have a far mask no no. Moon diso. So if we fear, she mask no. And no, and a bad boy who buy. Now me to me a pam yari, if ye mem. Aye me me. Oti ete ne. Ila isa ewohe no ekun. Ijake. Wo ye he la gbe ji anoto. Titru mas wo e. Ni panyo fai. Gbe ji anoto. La ke fosi ye mas wo e. Ni ye ano. Ko si si an wo mas ke. No ni ba bo wo he. Ni ba wo wo. No wo shwe he la ke je wo man e ni. Fellow Ghanaians. We must remember that the virus continues to jeopardize our lives and livelihoods. Without doubt, God has been gracious to us. I appreciate that the wearing of masks is difficult for all of us, but I entreat you to wear the mask. This is what will save us. I ask this evening that we remain steadfast in our adherence to the protocols so we can overcome this third wave of infections. If we do so, we will soon be able to return to our normal way of life. Zero active cases must remain the overarching goal. And I have no doubt that together and with the help of God, this too shall pass. For the battle is still the Lord's. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention and good night.